Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. I'm Dr. Bradwin. Welcome to Journal Club. Journal Club, okay. Journal Club is where we go into the scientific literature. We find a journal article, read it, and talk about it. Okay. And now you guys are part of a club. Look at that. You just thought you were going to watch a video, and now you're part of a club. Welcome to the club. It's called Journal Club. And it's important for patients, particularly that are interested in getting knowledge about their health or their procedures, to understand kind of a little bit how scientific research works, how publications work, and how to kind of tease through some of the stuff that maybe doesn't mean as much. And you know what? You can. It's accessible to yeah. everyone out there. Yeah. I made sure to get an article that is. I don't have to have a subscription for this. Nice. It's just available. It's from the British Medical Journal. Okay, sounds, so sounds legit. It's reputable. Anything okay. British is usually legit. Yeah. Just say it in a British accent. If you say it in a British accent, it's legit. <laughs> it's so it's a British Medical <sighs> Journal. And they did a study. Okay. Uh, the authors did a study to look at whether or not intraarticular corticosteroid hip injections help. Okay. Let's break That's that down. That's a mouthful. Down. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Intraarticular means? Into the joint. Corticosteroid is a type of medication that we use to reduce inflammation. And you put in those steroids into the joint. We do tons of it in the knee yes. uh, for osteoarthritis. Um, <clears throat> I don't mean we put tons of steroid in the knee. We sure. do many injections. It's in a the common knee. treatment yeah, for knee arthritis. For sure, or other joints of the body yes. too. Uh, and then whether or not it's used a lot in the hip has been controversial. Whether it should be used in the hip is controversial. Yep. For a few reasons. One, it's hard to get an injection into the hip. Yeah, and so what, what that means is like physically you can jam the needle in there, but it's, it's important to know that the tip of the needle is inside that sac that we've talked about before, your synovial lining that surrounds your hip joint. So that, that's a real key to the success of the treatment itself. So to do it, you need to have image guidance. Okay, so you can't just do it like that. No, no, it's not a dart game. Okay. You have to use a ultrasound yep. or x-rays. Fluoroscopy yeah. to watch the needle go into the joint. Okay, I'd so say in Canada more commonly, I'd say it's another extra here in the US. I feel like ultrasound yeah. is becoming much more popular and yeah. it's coming our way too. But. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, do you recommend it? If, like, do you often say, oh, you, have, you got hip arthritis, go get your hip injected? Before uh, you so, it? it depends on a lot of factors. For me, if you have really advanced arthritis and you're essentially just waiting for hip replacement, I'm not convinced that it makes a difference. So, it's happened before we've done it, and I just think and a really advanced arthritic hip is so sore that a lot of times there's not much to do at all. You just got to get to the OR. Yeah, and that's pretty well what the literature up yeah. until this article said. You know what? There's no good evidence to say that it's going to help. Right. And the other big thing about it is we often replace hip joints that are arthritic. And if we're thinking of replacing it down the road, an injection has been shown to increase the risk of infection. Right. For the subsequent surgery. Right. So you have a, to wait. A small it. amount, but yeah. still it's, it's, it's measurable. Yeah. So yeah, to answer your other question, if someone really wants it and they're really desperate and we're stuck and we can't get them to the OR, I think I would consider it. But yes, I think taking that all into account. Okay. okay so what's the, what's so the literature saying? So that brings say? us up to the article in the British Medical Journal. British Medical Journal, they took uh, a group of, pay, of people and broke them, broke them up into three groups. One okay. group got just education about hip arthritis and yeah. sort of non-operative treatment, the usual stuff, analgesics. Uh, the second group got an injection with just freezing okay. plus the education. Right. The third group got the education, the injection with freezing, and corticosteroid injection into the joint as well. Okay, important thing to recognize that when you're performing a study or you're designing a study, they work hard to make sure that these three groups are essentially equal in many other ways. So the amount of arthritis, their age, their other medical conditions, their height, their weight, that kind of stuff. So that essentially you want to compare Apples to apples. Right, right. Just exactly. important to know for all science, regardless of the type of research. So that's important that the, all the groups are very similar. The other thing that's important is that the people got randomly assigned to one of these groups. Right. Okay, you didn't pick and choose who's going to go in one group. They got randomly assigned to one of these three groups. And uh, the third important part for me and for you too, I know, and yes. for you too, should be that the authors of the study aren't funded or paid to do this study by the company that has. Uh, vested interest in the outcome of the sure. study. That happens a lot, okay? <laughs> and that, that, that introduces bias because if the author is being paid by the company that has an interest in the outcome, it might alter the results. Sure, it creates some a bias. Way. Bias, okay? Yes. So always look to see if there's a conflict of interest. Uh, and, if, and if there is a conflict of interest, if the level of conflict is acceptable to you, okay. that it doesn't invalidate the results of the study that you're reading. Right. So uh, there's a clinical evidence uh, course right there for you. Very nice. So what, what did it show? So it showed basically that uh, indeed the group that got the steroid and the freezing uh, did better functionally 
uh, than the group that just got the education and the sort of standard of care treatment right. at about up to the six month mark. Okay. Okay. So that group certainly did do better than the other group. It did show, however, that the group that just got the freezing injection and yeah. the freezing for the steroid kind of did similar. Interesting. Right? Very interesting. Uh, so. Makes yeah. you wonder if maybe the freezing was the more important part of it. Yeah, you hard wonder. to know. You need another study. Right, because freezing lasts a short time. The corticosteroid is supposed to last a long time. Right. So that's something that doesn't really make a ton of sense in the outcome. Agreed. And the other concerning thing for me was that in the group that got the steroid injection plus the freezing plus the education, so yes. that group that's over here, one of those patients actually died four months after getting the injection. Oh. They had a valve abnormality in their heart right. which puts you at risk for an infection in that valve called right. an endocarditis right okay and so the authors could not conclude that the death was not related to the injection so to break that down so theoretically what they're wondering is if doing the injection mm -hmm. caused bacteria from the skin mm -hmm. to end up in the joint mm -hmm. that ended up in the bloodstream mm -hmm. that then seeded the valve which caused a heart problem and ultimately death yeah yeah that's very serious Okay, so uh, they, they couldn't they couldn't say for sure this wasn't related. Right, so that means it possibly could be related. Yep. So, proceed with caution. Kind of, yeah, kind of odd because the next line in the abstract, anyways, the conclusion is so you should do injections for people with arthritis. Right. I'm sure the family of the person who died would say, actually, I don't think that's a good conclusion. Right. So, bottom line is it's not without risk to have an injection into the hip. Yep. Uh, however, there's some evidence to show that it could help at six months. Okay. Was that going to change your practice? Uh, I, I don't inject a lot of hips, so it's probably not. To be yeah, honest I, with you. yeah, personally, I don't inject any hips. I send right. them off because I don't have. Oh yeah, yes, to not, the yes, I send them away. Yes, agree. Uh, to do it, but I, and I don't recommend it. Typically, up until now, I haven't been recommending it because right. we are thinking of replacing the hip yep. in the future, uh, and we we know it can increase the risk of infection. Right. Um, and I don't. And in my experience, it hasn't helped that much. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, that's a study that's out there. Take it or leave it. Yeah. If you're wondering, should I get my hip injected? Go read this article. It was just published, like I think, this week or last in the British Medical Journal. And that might help you decide if you want to get your hip injected. So you guys are now up to date on hip injections. And if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.